Welcome to Leaders in Action. I'm Robin Trimingham of the Alderhood Group, and my guests today are Michelle Sims, who is an Alzheimer's volunteer, and Fiona Swindell, who is the Volunteer Development Coordinator for the UK Alzheimer's Society. This is the second segment of our chat with Fiona, and today we're chatting about what is the role of the Alzheimer's Society. Welcome back, ladies. Hi, both. Well, I'm so glad that we're able to share more information with everybody who watches this uh, video. Fiona, let's start uh, chatting again by explaining to everybody, how did the Alzheimer's Society get its start and the various sorts of ways it serves the community? So the Alzheimer's Society was started off by volunteers people who were caring for somebody who had Alzheimer's. So we had our 40th anniversary last year. So the uh, charity has been around for quite a long time now. So as well as actually researching prevention uh, and looking for cures, it was also really important to look at some social sides of the impact of dementia on individuals, carers, and the person that they were caring for to understand how society might change to better meet the needs uh, and embrace the reality of people who were affected by dementia. We are going through a process where we're looking to try to provide services for people uh, anywhere in uh, the three nations that we cover. So we cover Northern Ireland, Wales and England. Although our uh, name is the Alzheimer's Society, we do support people who are affected by all different types of dementia. That's a good point. Yeah, Bermuda has its own Alzheimer's Society as well. Fiona, um, I know one of the answers to this because of what I do, but what other support and services do the Alzheimer's Society offer specifically to caregivers? So um, it's really great, Michelle, that you're one of our companion calls volunteers. And uh, in that role, our volunteers can make a huge difference to a person who's caring for somebody with dementia by regular chats, and particularly while we're all struggling with COVID, mm -hmm. just to help people feel that they're less isolated. Those calls are also available for people with dementia. And I think it's important to recognise that we do give support to individuals who have dementia, who for a long time are very able to uh, be involved in all sorts of different activities uh, and it's really important that they're supported to do that, do the things they love for as long as they possibly can. We also have a helpline. Uh, so anybody affected by dementia can ring our helpline and ask questions. We have loads and loads of information available via our website. So lots of fact sheets and blogs that people can listen to. And we have a magazine uh, that's produced regularly that people can sign up for. And uh, we also have um, an online forum. And uh, the forum enables people who are affected by dementia to talk to other people who've been through similar situations. And they're able to get some pieces of advice or ideas for ways that they might be able to support the person with dementia or um, ideas for things that they can do themselves if they're a person with dementia. Um, and uh, it's moderated by volunteers who have all cared for somebody with dementia. That's excellent. Now, if you're watching and you're a caregiver, you already know the answer to my question. But for people who are watching whose lives aren't touched by uh, Alzheimer's, Fiona, why is it so difficult to care for someone who has Alzheimer's? So I think there's a number of reasons that make it really difficult for uh, people who are caring for somebody with Alzheimer's or dementia. And I think one of the main things is that your relationship to that person is going to change. 
generally you will have had uh, a relationship that's based on some sorts of equality around what you do, how you're able to support each other. And as the person with dementia goes on their journey with the disease, there are going to be more and more things that are going to change about your relationship. And because dementia can have an impact on people's uh, behaviour and the way that they interact with other people, that can be very challenging as well. Mm -hmm. So your feelings about the person and worrying about how the person might behave in different situations can have a huge impact on what you feel you're able to do uh, as a couple. Um, And that's one of the reasons why the Alzheimer's Society is so keen on doing things like dementia friend sessions, Mm -hmm. which enable people to have some understanding of dementia and means that they can contribute to making our communities dementia friendly. So families don't need to feel that they can't go and do the things that they want to do, that they're not going to worry that people are going to misinterpret what the person with dementia might be doing or saying and understand why the person might be having difficulties communicating so they're not going to make assumptions. I think the other thing is that having our uh, dementia support workers and dementia advisors who at the moment are doing welfare calls with people affected by dementia is really key. So you've got somebody there with the specialist knowledge to support you with the difficulties that you're coming uh, across. Um, And your worries about that individual, that individual's safety. Mm -hmm. Um, And equally for the person with dementia at the beginning of their journey, having somebody that they can talk to about their worries can be really, really important and helpful. In terms of caregivers then, uh, Fiona, I mean, I've recognised this from making my call. One of my calls is to a lady who, she was a carer, her husband recently passed away. But do you think we can offer any tips to any caregivers that might be listening or watching this video? So I think one of the things that can be really, really helpful is embracing the reality of the person with dementia. So if you think that uh, a person with dementia could be experiencing some visual um, hallucinations or visual disturbances that mean they are understanding their environment in a different way to the way that you are seeing it. So, for example, a very patterned wallpaper in a room with, you know, a very small pattern on it could be easy for you to interpret and understand that it's flowers. But to the person with dementia, they might see that as insects crawling all over the wall. So if you find that the person with dementia suddenly becomes agitated in a particular environment, look at that environment and try to work out, is that carpet really swirly? Could it look like snakes? Oh my goodness. Is that why the person's okay. frightened in that environment? Mm. Can we change the environment to make it more dementia friendly? And there's lots of other ways that you can uh, embrace the reality of the person with dementia. So if they have a problem with their memory, you might sort of think that, well, there isn't much point in family members visiting because they're not going to remember they've visited. But although the person's short-term memory is being affected, the part of the brain that has storage of our emotional memories stays intact for a long, long time with a person's journey with dementia. Mm -hmm. So they can still access the emotions that they associate with individuals, with places and spaces and with activities. So having as many positive interactions with people and doing positive activities, that's going to provide a sense of well-being for the person with dementia and help them to have the best quality of life that they can for as long as they possibly can. Fiona, this is a a fascinating and very helpful conversation. Uh, We're just out of time here. You're watching Leaders in Action. Join us for part three of our conversation with Fiona Swindle.